Hello everyone. So in this lecture, we start to familiarize ourselves with some basic of design. So far, what we have done is modeling and lots of analysis of system. Analysis in terms of stability, starting from routes criteria. The route locus give us lots of other information about how my closed loop system change as I vary the gain from zero to infinity. Okay, we also saw analysis and frequency domain. We characterize relative stability in terms of gain and phase margin. So what we will do now is slowly learn com concept of design. Now, why? what are the typical design problem? So while we were doing time response analysis or even the frequency response analysis, we had some basic terms, parameters or basic things which we observed like rise time, settling time, peak overshoot and we saw how all these are related to natural frequency and damping. Similarly, the frequency domain concept like bandwidth, resonant frequency were also in a way related to system parameters. Now, any design problem would be based on setting these values like peak overshoot or rise time or settling time and uh, steady state error to some desirable number. Now that is what we will focus on how do we go about doing this. So there are three basic elements in control design. So we start with the proportional controller, the integral and then at the last would be derivative action. So let's slowly go through these things right. So we start defining in our earlier lecture the closed loop system of this form right where we have rs as reference input this is my plan this is controller this is the disturbance and this is the noise okay noise in is so we start with this closed loop system so this feedback configuration we saw is capable of or it does improve the stability. It also in some sense helped in meeting the performance specification. We will elaborate on this a little more shortly. We also saw how feedback help decreasing the sensitivity to parameter variations of system. Disturbance ejections was also very obvious while we were doing the feedback control and of course atten attenuating the measurement of noise and so on right so of of course what was the defining factor even when we looked at error constant was you know this is the signal es right so a typical first order system with some time constant T will, will, will look like this. Okay. G, G1S is equals to 1 by 1 plus Ts. And its response was supposed to be like this. Right. Depending upon time constant, how fast or how slow it was. Okay. And it also had inherent some steady state error. So this is UT and this let me call as CT or even you can call as YT. Depending on whatever terminology or notation we are using. Okay. So the second order system was of this form. I had natural frequency omega n square. I had damping ratio and so on. Right. And for second order system, we define some basic properties like rise time. It was depending on omega n and zeta. Delay time, we have defined percentage overshoot, overshoot and settling time or even this is peak overshoot. Okay. Here it is percentage overshoot. Okay. And all of them define depending on omega n and damping ratio. Okay. So typically any performance matrix 
is defined in terms of these four and five things which we defined here rise time delay time settling time overshoot and sometime also steady state errors okay now if you see that it, you know all these were defined only for second order system and typically you may say well not over all system we come across are second order system it might be we actually saw third order system we also did example where we had system with seven poles and so on so how do we deal and how do we translate this situation or these design parameter or performance matrix into cases where we have several poles in the system okay so let's say i have a configuration like this right i have two poles here i have two con conjugate poles here one pole here one zero here so i have five poles and one zero right so well what is the contribution of poles and zero to the response of the system so you can say that these two poles right I can call them dominating poles of the system because these are as time increases the response of this now it dominate more than these three four five guys over here right so we will see you know actually I will show you some plots and then also we will do some analysis on this right so let us first start by analyzing the system where there is an extra pole and or zero along with dominant pole and i think over next few slide i think this concept of dominant pole should be more or less clear okay so we start with typical second order system a closed loop system and we know that this is always stable and we do not need to worry about stability here just for you know computational purpose of a simplicity i say i set the damping ratio to 0 0.5 and omega n equals to 1 so now i will start by investigating what is the effect of adding a 0 so where do i add the 0 let's say i add 0 at s equals to minus a again in the left half plane well i just do a little manipulation here to maintain dc gain equals to one nothing really changed just for things to be look a little neat i add you know i will add s plus a if I'm I'm having s plus a my gain is a and if I divide s plus a by a then my gain is 1 so if I just use 0 as s plus a my DC gain would be a right and I just uh, want to make it 1 so I will just do s by a by a so for which my DC gain is 1 okay so the response would be now well you how will my transfer function now look like is c1 s is this guy the 0 at minus a in such a way that dc gain is 1 divided by this guy and i will get something like this right so i have original thing when oh, zeta is equals to 0 0.5 and omega n equals to 1 this guy just becomes 1 by s square plus s plus 1 so now look at something interesting here right so this is my original transfer function which is already here and then what happened to the transfer function if i add this s by a plus 1 well, I still have this guy in denominator and a numerator at s, a numerator at s and we know what is the idea of s, right? In Laplace domain, it has to do with differentiation. Okay, 
loosely speaking multiply by s would means differentiating the particular signal and therefore if i look right it in terms of in terms of time domain it will be c1t is equal to ct plus 1 by a differentiation of ct okay so this is how it will look like so now what happened to response well this just for simplicity take a step response okay so y s is c1 s 1 by s right now over here, you know c1 s with a step or unit step has a laplace of 1 by s so we know c1 s is nothing else but c s that is my 1 by s square plus s plus 1 plus s by a cs so put that value over here from last slide so where does this come from we have seen already in last uh, last slide okay and that's what happens here so this is y1s plus s by a y1s so i will just define output corresponding to original plant c1s as y1s so now i will go back to inverse and do the inverse of laplace and go back to time domain and what have i have is yt is equals to y1t plus 1 by a differentiation of y1t the original response without a zero okay so i just denote y2t is equals to y1 differentiation of y1t okay so the total response is y1 t plus 1 by a y2 t okay so let's again let's just you know remember this for a while y1 t is my original response without zero y2 t is just a response of zero correct original and response of zero of adding zero and then y t is my total response okay so now we will see response of the system for different value of a so if i just take this system and i say i add a zero at s equals to minus 0.5 so what was my original signal i am calling it as y1 t so this signal in black right here is my y1 t now i add a derivative term or we can say zero add a zero and what zero does it add this extra term into the response we have seen that we have y1 t plus 1 by a y2 t so this is my extra term in the response so y1 1 by a y2 t so this is my y2 t what is y2 t is differentiation of y1 t okay so the total response is y1 plus y2 t 1 by a so this red line over here okay so black line is my original response and this red line is total response by maintaining dc gain to be 1 okay this is for s equals to minus 5 now where were my original poles of the system so original pole were at minus 1 plus minus root 3 by 2 j here okay so i have something here like point 5 1 by 2 plus j root 3 by 2 and conjugate of that over here so these are my poles I have added a zero at zero point five. So these two are the pole of system, and I'm just adding a zero over here. And this one is again sigma and z omega axis. Okay. So I say I add a zero. I remove this guy and I add a zero over here. Okay. So this is not there for now. So now I am having a zero over minus one. I remove this guy, right? So this is no longer 
exists so what i have a second order system plus a pole oh sorry a zero at minus 1 okay so again we follow the same thing and we see what happened to the response so response in black remain as it is okay so it's the same response as this one and see what happened to the response response in black remain same and the scales are little different here therefore this look like little bigger right this one is bigger this one is smaller scales are bigger here so y2 look like this which is 1 by a differentiation of y1 t so the overall now is something like this this red line okay now i do what i do is i just remove this one and go here at say minus 8 so now what happen is this y1 will remain same still the same y2 blue line does something like this and i have this total response here something like this okay now again let's compare this red plot right so zero is closer to the original you see here difference is quite big over here this difference is quite big between original and by addition of zero and over here it is small the response of red is the effect of adding a zero for s equals to 0 point minus 5 if i add s equals to 0 at s is equals to minus 1 there is still some effect but the curve get much closer okay and add a zero further to the left right at very far say s equals to minus 8 say the response is more or less the same in a way it can just say i just do not add zero right and nothing change okay so apart from these distances in the curve what else do we observe what is the difference between black curve and the red curve here yeah. so well one thing obvious that it has increased the overshoot okay over here in this in this graph overshoot has increased so steady state value is 1 so i am and my overshoot is like almost 60 percent or 70 percent when zero is at 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 now here the pole is or the zero is slightly go further to the left so the overshoot is still increased but not too much like this one now well it more or less the same well the first and increased overshoot depending on the location of zero but what happened here right there is no much change in settling time it's much easier over here also if you will see there is no much change in settling times so no significant change in settling time okay so they more more or less 98 percent of original value you know fairly the same time right all three guys including you know this original one black one then well that is good here that i have a faster response okay and i reach peak time much faster here i was taking about two or half seconds yeah i reach in less than one second over here i reach less than one second okay so similarly here also the response is faster right now i reach this time you know when obviously like two or two and a half seconds i reach about little over one second and so on my response is faster over here 
I'm shifting or pulling my zero further to the left. So my response is faster as I keep shifting or pulling my zero further to the left. And I keep doing this. What I observed is that a, a, a go farther, further to the left, furthest the contribution to the zero or the contribution of zero to the system response decrease and we get black the original behavior. So this is for minus eight. I don't really need to plot this curve also. It would just be almost exactly the same, right? So there is some effect of adding zero and it based on where we add my zero. Okay, so we want them somewhere close to this, right? About the, that is the way that the overshoot actually increases, but nothing change in settling time, okay? So now what if I add a zero in right half plane, right? So again, we do the same thing that to maintain DC gain, at one, we just divide entire thing with a. My transfer function of the system is now one minus s by a. Is again look fairly the same. So I have one by a square plus s plus one minus one by a one by a square plus one s plus one. Okay. In another word, my c one t is equal to c t minus one by a c dot t. Okay. Similarly, the response here also translate in the same way. That is the total response is the response y1. Then in addition, we have this response due to 0 that is placed at s equals to a. Okay. Okay, so what is happening here? Well, again, the black curve is same as in the previous case. The blue curve is the effect of adding zero on the right half plane. And now red curve, which is the combination of these two, looks something strange now, right? So initially, if you look at the plot, you might see that, uh, well, what I, what I do or what I want to reach, I want to reach is plus one, right? In well with less than number of overshoot and, you know, settling time, should be fairly small and there is no steady state error but what I am doing is initially I just switch this on and I see that I am actually going away from zero okay which means well you know I just want to stop it over here because I think well the system is doing something very weird right but then if I just let it go for a little while, it reaches, you know, minimum here. And then it actually start going up. Going up and then does, you know, something same as the previous one, this actual case. So there is something increased overshoot. Of course, you know, there is nothing much in the response is little slower. So the overshoot has increased. Of course, the settling the, uh, time doesn't do much things. Okay, so what is the first observation? So far, we have only analyzed overshoot, right? So how much do I start from zero? My desired value is one. How much do overshoot before settling to one? So that is over here, right? This was the overshoot before settling at 1, right? So that is over here. Same. Now in addition to that, we also experience something co called as undershoot. I go down to 0 0.5 and just almost 0 0.8 and then come back here, right? And then this undershoot, what it does, it actually increase my delay time it increase my rise time and peak time so on right so which means that my system is quite sluggish now so when poles or or and zeros are in right half plane these are called non minimum phase phases poles and zeros we define that 
even earlier also and we will stick to that definition that if all the poles and zeros are to the left then it is a minimum phase system and if some guy sit on the right it is non minimum phase system hence if i have a right half zero i experience an undershoot and this will always happen and i will show you a little proof of that also little later on but okay so here what what we will see is the effect of adding a pole to a standard step response of second order system so well there is a standard response this one is my standard response and i'm adding a pole here right i add a pole at different location at s equals to minus 1 minus a so first i see that if i just look at y1 so this is my natural response or the response without adding a pole and if i add a pole very close to origin and you see there is a significant change in response also good in a way because you know i will kill the overshoot and other stuff similarly if i had a pole slightly further away like five times to left or i say well the response almost look at say right there is a very little margin here and so on so keep going further i see that red line actually touches the black line right so as you know as the pole is keep going say a is approaching to infinity the contribution of pole it decreases and as you know if this pole keeps going to infinity the contribution there is no effect at all so whenever we had in a design process where we have to add a pole such that it doesn't have a too much effect on transient response we take it five times the real part of the dominant poles as in this middle case where we have a pole at s equals to minus 2.5 so we will keep this in mind while we have or while we will exp explicitly talk about design problem when we were looking at you know improving the transient performance or steady state performance and so on okay so this led to the definition of our characteristics of dominant poles of the system so dominant poles are the closed loop poles that have dominant contribution to the transient response of the system and it is quite possible that their a current conjugate pair they could also have just sitting right on the top of each other say this is at minus 1 and higher order system are generally adjusted such that they exist a pair of dominant complex conjugate pair which uh, in poles uh, which in that case we would just rect restrict our analysis to these two poles we do couldn't do the entire analysis and design right but for that well it is desirable to have a real part of other poles all these and zero at least minus 5 times further away from the real part of dominant poles if this is minus 1 so these guys should be at least minus 5 and further away so this is minus 1 there is a say a dominant pole not really dominant pole they are like typically because the response of this guy over here they die, die down faster okay so the response of this guy is even like little slower than this this blue guys okay so limiting case in when the poles are here right on the imaginary axis that is the limiting case so the response never dies down right on the if my poles are at imaginary axis the response will never die die out so this if the plus this is the case then these are the dominant poles because they will still go and die down to zero after maybe fairly large time but they will remain as it is so if you look at in terms of classroom the guy who are on you know sitting on the last bench farther uh, furthest away from 
द टीचर गो टू स्लीप मच फास्टर देन द गाइज हु वर सिटिंग ऑन दी फ्रंट फ्रंट डेक्स पॉसिबल यू नो द डोमिनेंट गाइज आर द वन हु आर ऑन दी फर्स्ट रो एंड द सेकेंड रो राइट सो इट जस्ट लाइक दैट एन अटेंशन ऑफ अटेंशन पैन ऑल्सो राइट सो दीज गाइज हु आर ऑन लाइक फार अवे विल लूज द अटेंशन फास्टर एंड दीज गाय विल लूज लिटिल स्लोअर एंड दीज गाइज विल प्रॉपरली बी मोर अटेंटिव दैन दीज गाइज ओके एंड इफ गाय यू आर हियर और इवन यू कैन से योर फैकल्टी और टीचर सो दे विल बी अटेंटिव ऑल द टाइम दे विल नेवर स्लीप और दे कान गो टू स्लीप राइट ये और शी विल ऑलवेज बी टेक टॉकिंग 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 सो दे दे विल नेवर डाइड आउट ओके ओके सो नाउ वी विल सी द इफेक्ट ऑफ एडिंग पोल टू द ओपन लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन सो फार वी हैव जस्ट डूइंग द क्लोज लूप वन राइट एस स्क्वायर प्लस टू जीटा ओमेगा एन एस प्लस ओमेगा एन स्क्वायर राइट नाउ वी विल सी वॉट इज द इफेक्ट ऑफ एडिंग पोल टू द ओपन लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन well we will do this in terms of root locus now the step response something may not be give you too much information but we know root locus actually is little easier way to interpret and things are much straight forward some in some sense to see from the root locus so we will switch to root locus plot right so let's say i just have 1 by s plus 2 so it is just a one pole here so root locus will look like this gain keeps on increasing and it just go further and further to the left so it is sta stable all the time okay now this guy i added a pole at s plus 4 now this is my original pole and i added another pole here now i know this from root locus lecture that this guy will move towards right this guy will move towards left they meet and they go away their own way right now i say well i just do some more experiment i will just add s plus 8 i will just add it uh, pole at s plus 8 so i have s minus 2 minus 4 minus 8 and all these guys will would go to infinity because there is no zero here and this guy will move to the right Uh, to the left because something tell me that a point on root locus on real axis only if the number there is no point here because we know that uh, on the left hand side sorry on the right hand side the number of uh, pole sum of poles and zeros to the right is odd number okay so there this is not allowed to be on root locus this guy well the entire line is allowed on root locus and we he just take the easiest path and just go away run away now these two guys meet here and i calculate the angle of asymptote that would be 60 180 and minus 60 so these guys will go this way okay so what is happening right so first well the root locus was uh, which was just going to infinity in the first case is now pulled a little bit to the right so the root locus exists just in this domain so it was just earlier existing in the entire domain here right so i added one more pole it shifted to right then i added one more pole and it shifted to right and it also goes to the words of instability after attaining a particular value of the gain k right so these are very simple things right there is nothing to actually remember as formula or anything like that but just that we just putting plotting various thing just kind of just doing some initial experiment to do uh, to then you know evolve towards a general theory okay now what happen if i add up zero now to the open loop transfer function let's say i start with open loop configuration so i have a pole at origin i have a pole at minus 2 and i have a pole at minus 
of course you know if i just plot the root locus this guy will go to infinity these two guys will meet here and they will move away they will again go to infinity and after a particular value of k they will become come to unstable region okay so now let's just add a zero slightly towards the left of minus 5 right so this was minus 5 so this is minus 7 and this is 0 so this guy which was now running away is now trapped in this 0 here not only this right these guys also doing something nicer he uh, not only holds up this guy here he also do things in a way that the root locus now is well more or less shifted to the negative reason right there is no point of instability here because my asymptotes are just the imaginary axis okay now i added some pole somewhere not really minus seven uh, but somewhere between these two poles this pole and this pole okay so let's see it, it is at minus three so this guy again it will ju uh, just move to the right and stop here okay and now i see that root locus had improved much because if i would deal with the gain here you see i am closer to the verge of instability in this case right so this kind of adding a zero it makes my system stable because it is pulling blue and green line to the left but it is it may not be too good in terms of relative stability now i am adding a zero at minus three and i see well it actually fairly this is relative stability fairly stable for value of gain k all the values of gain k so what does the observation tells us the observation tells us that adding a zero to the open loop uh, transfer function it pulls the root locus to left and the effect of zero is prominent when it close to imaginary axis so in this plot we just started with three order system and then study several effects right okay so that's all for today's lecture thank you